Nestled away in the Old Town area of Edith, capital of the Calvert Republic, is a small, humble business. It was owned by Van Arkwright, a problem solver of sorts called a Spriggan. One day, a first-year student from Aramis Academy, Agnès Claudel, showed up at his door. She requested his help in finding antique ornaments called the Genesees, which she inherited from her great-grandfather. Utilizing his connections in normal society and the underworld, Van and Agnes found one of the Genesees, only to come under fire from a mafia group called Almada. Despite the seemingly hopeless situation, the Genesis resonated with Van Zypha, a tactical orbment from which a little fairy named Mare appeared. With her assistance, Van clad himself in an armor made of shards and transformed into the Grindel. He turned the tables on the Mafioso with its overwhelming strength. After that, Agnes agreed to work for Van part-time in exchange for his help in finding all eight Genesees. The two of them traveled all across Calvert in search of them and made a number of new friends along the way. Fairy al Fayed, a Jaeger who was raised for a life on the battlefield as a Kruga warrior. Aaron Wei, a prodigy and a reckless leader of a group of delinquents from Longport's Eastern Quarter. Reset Twinings, a service concierge dispatched from the Marduk Company to provide Arkride solutions with impeccable support. Katra Salesian, a young engineer stationed at the Basel Institute of Science, where he participates in the development of cutting-edge technology. Judith Lancer, a famous actress in the world of film who leads a double life as the phantom thief Grimcat. And Beargard Zeman, Van's former mentor, and a man who cast off his old name. Together, they braved countless ordeals and collected many of the Genesees. Though they were hounded at every turn by Almada, who were using the devices to sow confusion and chaos wherever they went. Eventually, Almada's leader, Gerard Dantes, detonated a nuclear weapon in a remote village and wiped it off the map. Multiple factions, now driven to bring about Almada's end, found themselves as pawns in a death game, where Van and his friends came out on top and ultimately defeated Almada's executives and cohorts. Then they put an end to Dante's, the source of all this evil. However, during a festival celebrating the Calvardian Revolution, one of Almada's leaders, Melchior, unleashed pandemonium on the capital, and in the process revived Dante's and the other executives and summoned countless demons into the city. Pandemonium brought time and Edith to a standstill, but with the aid of their allies, Van and his crew were able to once again defeat Melchior and Dante's. Upon Dante's demise, the diabolic core that he had absorbed into his body found its way back to Van, its original host. Van awakened as Vagrant's diaspora and disappeared, fleeing from his companions. Unwilling to lose their friend, the group chased after him into the boundary between Zemuria and the beyond and confronted the demon that overtook him. Thanks to the urging of his friends, Van was able to regain himself and temporarily drive the demon lord out by flinging the core into the depths of the rift. With all of these incidents behind them and the end of the year fast approaching, everyone other than Agnes bid a brief farewell to Van as they each left Edith behind. But before they departed, they all promised that they'd see each other again in the near future. The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak 2. Coming February 14th, 2025 to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5.